three five-minute rounds if they need them in the Cage Warriors flyweight division. Connor Hignett in the black, Darren L. Gorman in the white. Both men coming out looking very focused here, Dan. Yeah, both guys uh, adept on the feet, on the ground. Hignett coming in with a, a almost karate-like style with his striking traditional martial arts background there. O'Gorman, the more boxing-orientated striker. You've you got to love it when two guys come out, take the center of the, the cage, and then just try and bang. You've got to appreciate it. As much as I prefer the grappling, of course, uh, you've got to love it as well. Oh, big shots from both fighters there. Keep going, that's it! Oh, Gorman, the taller, rangier of the two, so Hignett's going to have to use his movement to slide in there. But, you know, we often see that with karate stylists and traditional martial artists. Their movement, their ability to dip in and out yeah. of the pocket is what wins them these exchanges. He's going to have to do that here against O'Gorman. Yeah, using, utilizing the kicks a lot more. He's throwing some leg kicks, a few body kicks, a few front kicks. That's it, you can hear from the corner, use your range. Oh, nice left hook there from O'Gorman. I think that blocks the kick to the body there. Yeah. No, that hard kick to the body there from O'Gorman. Once you start landing these head, you know, these leg kicks, uh, these body kicks. Oh, Hignett wobble there. Hignett wobble, tuning for a takedown. He's going to watch that. Get a team From here, what you're going to see is um, you're going to see in top position here that left shoulder pushing forward. That's going to try and stop your opponent from being able to grab the hands and actually attack this guillotine. So Darren trying to get those hands, pummel those hands on the inside and try and connect them. Until those hands are connected, you're not really in that much trouble. Do you see how he's looking the fight? He's looking to connect the hands. Now, now it could be on. I don't think it will be because of the position, but now it could be on. Hignett trying to squeeze his head out there. Now, this, is, this is another problem with the close guard. The close guard is a good position to go to, but you see how that head's going to pop out? The problem with the close guard when you go for a guillotine is the person drives in. Obviously there, there, there was enough space for the head to pop out, but otherwise the person drives in. It becomes very difficult to uh, try and expose that neck. Now oh, Gorman already trying to inch his way back to the cage. Oh, Ooh. beautiful sweep by O'Gorman. Hignett looking to come out the back door. So what you, what you saw there is he tried to, he anticipated an attempt to turn the back, went to react to that and then exposed himself for the sweep. Oh, Gorman catching the kick there and able to clinch up with Hignett on the cage. Hignett was coming out fired up after escaping that tight guillotine. Okay, Darren looking to take it to the ground now and he's, gonna, he's looking to take the back straight off of this. This is a very different style of grappling that we've seen so far today. This is someone who very obviously wants to at attack for the submissions, looking to positionally transition to somewhere where he can look to attack. He's got one in hit, one hook in here. He's got it across the entire body. He's using the fence to stop his opponent from turning, and now he's looking to fight those hands and try and get that hand or that forearm underneath the neck. I know Gorman has a lot of time to play with here. Over a minute. What are you going to see here? Like I said, those very long legs allow you to lock off the body triangle very easily. This this doesn't look on, but this is a horrible position. This is a horrible position here. And when someone's very often when someone starts trying to punch out of a position, it can it can loosen it, but it can actually also tighten it. And that's what he needs to be careful about. The, the only problem here is that is that uh, Darren's too high, which means the angle that he's pulling that forearm is going up into the chin instead of back into the throat. If he can get lower, which he's trying to do now, the pressure could actually go into the throat. And you can see there's an increase in blood pressure in the head here. He's doing something, but I don't think he's going to be quite enough at this point. He needs to get underneath, so he changes the angle of where he's pulling. Looking to adjust the grip here is O'Gorman. The corner. So now look at the angle. That would have been a better angle to look to apply it, but he's continuing the grip fight here. This looks much stronger. You see how much lower he is from here? 
Oh, Hignett tried to turn in, but he gets mounted. Let's see what O'Gorman can do here. Hignett trying to shrimp out. Head and arm choke here. Oh, this is tight. This is very tight. With those long arms, you can lock this off tight, but there's, what, five seconds left in the match? In, in, in the round, sorry? End of the wow. round. Hignett survives, and we will see round two. Really, really nice grappling exchange to the last uh, sort of one third of that match there. Um, Connor doing a fantastic job of timing his escape right to force the mount position. Oh, it was a beautiful right hand down the pipe. That hurt Connor Hignett, and that forced him to shoot him, which in turn leaves him open to the guillotine attempt here. Darren looks like he's going to try and turn to his knees. Connor reacts, and then that gives him the opportunity to hit that really, really nice dynamic sweep. Unfortunately, can't really materialize a solid position from there, but very, very nice escape. This, this was tight. If I was in that position, I wouldn't have let go. I would have looked to pummel the legs out and pass the side and try and finish from there. That was very, very tight. Whether or not Hignett thought about tapping there remains to be seen. The fact of the matter is, he's out in the second round, and we are going to get another round at least of action here. Hignett charging forward with the body shots. He's got to be careful of the counter punches from O'Gorman. I, I think that could be a really good strategy, though. He wants to close the distance. He wants to fight on the inside in the stand-up here. He doesn't want to stay on the, the end of the, the limbs of uh, Darren O'Gorman uh, because you know he's just going to start picking him off, basically. And you heard Hignett's corner say, so you can't move straight forward into the pocket. And that's probably the best advice they can give him in this situation. He's got to start cutting angles here. Yep. He's got to start dipping and finding a way in. Oh, Gorman, very big for the featherweight division. Just physically, the, the length he's got on him. Yes! Beautiful shot! On sight! Get them on sight! The corner of Hignett, screaming for the man to keep his hands tight. He took a big elbow there, though. Nice little short elbow. Nice and good pose. Nice and good pose. But, but look, look, look at the distance between the two athletes. He, 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 yeah, Darren's doing a fantastic job of keeping himself at the perfect range. Where he's not going to be hit, but he's going to be able to strike. Connor with a nice body shot there, but fell a little bit short with a second. Oh, Gorman landing heavy as well. Oh, Gorman falling just short there, but he's backing Hignett up against the cage. Yeah, very, very composed, very controlled. A lot of the time when you feel like you've got the opponent on the run, you can charge in, but he's keeping him at length. Again, guillotine attempt. Oh, a flying triangle attempt, and he's got it locked off. Flying triangle from Darren O'Gorman. Okay, this is a fantastic position. There's a very good chance he's going to finish from here. You see how he's locked off on the foot? If he can pull that shit in a little bit and lock off on the shin instead, he's going to go, yeah, this is a much stronger position. He thinks he's got it, and I think he's going to get the tap here. He wants to pull him in. He doesn't want him to go away. He wants to pull him in. There you go. Oh, and Hignett's bleeding from the head as well. This, this is a bad position. One of those elbows. He spat his gum shirt out to try and get a little bit more breath in. I think this is going to be a tap. This is a fantastic position from here. If he mad, if um, if uh, Darren shoots his right arm underneath and grabs onto that leg, stops him from being able to throw it over the top. There's nowhere for him to go at this point. He transitions to the armbar. Oh, Gorman, look, you've got to keep him low. Arm. Don't go for the armbar. Attack that triangle. Cut the angle from here. Cut the more angle from here. Elbows from O'Gorman. Nail-biting moments here in Manchester. What you don't want to happen is the, the, the good thing with those long legs, it's easy to get the triangle. The bad thing with those long legs, it's harder to finish. You need to take up space. He should be cutting the angle and pulling his opponent in, and he's going to get the finish. 
trying to push that elbow across to close that triangle up even tighter. Okay, now this arm again. This arm bar is very nice. This is exactly what you should be doing, which is if the opponent is deep, the arm bar is the elbow is not going to be on the hip as a fulcrum. But when the opponent tries to pull backwards, the elbow slides past, and at that point you can arm bar. He's, his legs are obviously tiring because he looked to switch to the opposite side of the triangle from there. I think he should lock in, connect a better position with those legs, and then cut the angle for the finish. It'll be such a shame to see him lose this triangle because this is an excellent position and it was a beautiful setup. Oh, Gorman absolutely relentless in pursuit of the triangle and also the elbows. He's still locking off on the foot though. He's got to, he's got to put back pressure with his right leg, with his right foot. He pulls back. This is a better position. You see that slight angle? And he's got to hold it slowly. He's got to hold it slowly. Cut the angle. Come underneath the leg from here. And now Gorman's legs must be jelly at this point. Absolutely. Oh, Gorman still trying to strike through. Hickner trying to find a way out. So drop that leg. You see how high that left leg is there? That means it, he's again attacking the armbar. He's going to be absolutely knackered at this point. Oh, he's Gorman. triangling him, armbarring him, punching him all at the same time. Hickner looking to get out of this triangle. Incredible scenes here. Again, look, look at the angle of the right foot. The right foot is pushed down. He needs to pull that foot backwards. He needs to drop his left leg down heavy. And look, this, this elbow's out. If that elbow comes out, he's going to escape the triangle. This is the point where you, this is where you attack the armbar to force the opponent to come back into the triangle or get tapped out from here. But if he powers through that, he's going to be out. Oh, Hickner survived. Incredible scenes. Oh my God. Hickner looking for the <laughs> this is crazy. Oh my god. Oh my god. Now Connor Hill actually has a standing heel hook on his resume in pro MMA. That would have been absolutely insane. <laughs> Imagine that. Let's take a look at this flying triangle, Dan. Talk us through it's, this it's one. beautiful. So he goes to the single leg. You've got to bring the leg to the outside. See how that left leg's on the outside, and then boom, you can jump up. You throw the leg over that shoulder, and then boom, you're into the triangle. Like I said before, the long legs help you set it up, but it makes it harder to finish. You've got to do everything right to get the tap. And man, that, his, his legs are going to be absolutely knackered at this point. So the arm bar's on, he's trying to apply the pressure here, he wants to force either the tap or the come back in, but he grits through the pain and pulls that head out, boom, you're out, and then immediately goes into a heel hook. Absolutely incredible scenes here, the end of the second round, Conor Hickner surviving the triangle, surviving the arm bar, and he makes it to the third round. Let's see what Darren O'Gorman has left in him. Let's see how we can move after gripping for, what, three minutes, three and a half minutes? I think that is the genuine question. How much, like, what can his legs do at this point? Kick to the body from Hignett. He was all going to a submission the whole round. Absolutely right. The, uh, the corner. Oh, I'm right from Hignett there. So as we saw before, those first couple of rounds, uh, Darren was throwing a lot of kicks. Now those legs are firmly planted on the ground to stand underneath them. Bring them onto the backhand. Come on, Darren. But yeah, we also have to ask, how much does Hignett have left in him? Being in that triangle, we may have disrupted his breathing. Yeah. Of course, the, the mental toll it takes on you, being in those situations, the adrenaline dump. Can Conor Hignett get the finish here? He weighs in with a combination. Yeah, I think you're, you're looking at two people. One person is just their entire body has been going through a lot, um, and they're knackered, and the other person, they've just blown their legs out, essentially. Oh, Gorman trying to find a way in with those short elbows, Hignett. Looking to circle off to the back there, switching, switching to a single leg. Oh, big knee from Darren O'Gorman. Hignett resets. Big left hook there from O'Gorman. The court man firing off solid shots in the third round. Hignett's got to be wary here. You're not, not using those kicks anywhere near as much, but having success with those strikes with the hands. Big combination from Hignett there. Finished it with a crisp right hand. And what a story this would be if Conor Hignett could come back and get the victory in this third frame. 
Nice change of levels with his strikes there. O'Gorman still very much in the fight himself. Oh my god! From the brink of defeat, really from the brink of defeat in that triangle for what, two, three minutes and what a knockout that is. And I genuinely just think that, that, uh, that Darren O'Gorman could, just couldn't get away as fast enough. His legs are just slow. Oh my goodness. Jeez. What a comeback. <laughs> yeah. Man, I'm speechless. Yeah. The corner of Conor Hignett uh, <laughs> pumped up. Going absolutely wild here. Sean Martin oh my. is uh, celebrating furiously as well he might. Oh, what a peach of a right hand. Every one of those shots just absolutely perfect precision. What a performance from Conor Hignett. And hey, let's give Darren O'Gorman his due. Man. He fought pretty much the perfect fight up to that point. Yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of glad he didn't finish the flying triangle, but then we wouldn't have been able to see like one of the, one of the most savage knockouts I've seen in a while. I don't know who's happier, me, or Sean Martin in the cage. That was insane. What a finish. Yeah, a great performance from both athletes. Like like you said, an incredible comeback, but an incredible performance from Darren O'Gorman up until that point. Uh, he, he, I really genuinely think he just uh, blew his legs out in that triangle. Well, let's throw it to our MC in the cage to make it official. Here's Mr. Hal Chaplin. Ladies and gentlemen, your referee, Mr. Mark Goddard, calls a stop to this contest after two minutes and 12 seconds of round number three, declaring your winner by way of knockout in the blue corner, Connor, the hand grenade, Ignis.